First, I would like to thank Klaus for the fantastic topic because as surgeons we know complications do not exist. But uh, if you look in papers, mostly you find just two lines saying, well, everything went well. But there are some papers, if you take this Princeps paper about the surgical dislocation from Gans, you see that there is almost half a page speaking about complications. Well, there are not many complications, but they analyzed it quite well. Now, I would like to classify these complications, saying that there are some complications which you can encounter as well in hip arthroscopy as in surgical dislocation or in PAO. And of course, there are specific complications to each method. Common complications are adhesions. Uh, first, this was described after surgical dislocation of the hip with an incidence up to 6%. These were the symptomatic cases. The problem is we don't know how many patients really have adhesions that are asymptomatic. Of course, you say these are not the, the problematic cases. In hip arthroscopy, it has been described, but there are no numbers. And uh, in PAO, we don't know. I had a case of uh, reverting PAO with massive uh, adhesions which I needed to, to scope afterwards. So, uh, risk factors, intraarticular surgery, of course. If you have a bleeding bone surface, which you have when you correct the offset on the femoral neck, the use of bone wax was also incriminated and the rehabilitation protocol. We are much more aggressive today than we were a few years ago. Now, if you have a patient having impingement symptoms after the surgery, of course, you have to look at the x-ray pictures, make sure you did all the corrections perfectly, and if you have no explanation, do a new ortho MRI, and you can find such adhesions around the femoral neck. And, uh, of course, the treatment is to scope the patients to, to make an arthrolysis. And you have to open as well the perilabral sulcus as these adhesions. In this case, there were many adhesions entering the joint. You didn't see anything. You had to, to liberate progressively, and you see still what is remaining. You have really to go down all around the neck to, to have these clear. Another problem is the correction. Uh, you've heard during these two days over correction, under correction. This is a fantastic image. This is clearly an over correction, but at the same time you have an under correction in the distal part of the neck. So I think this is related first to uh, an insufficient planning of the case and second to an insufficient technique. So, uh, planning of the surgery, it's mandatory to analyze the x-ray pictures carefully. This is the roadmap to surgery. I think th this is really the most important part. For me, uh, the radial cuts of the artero MRI show you more precisely what are the deformations of the femoral neck, but you can already see many things on the x-ray pictures. Then you have to see what you do. Of course, it's much easier in open surgery. You can go all around the head, correct everything you want. But you can also do this with a hip scope. You see in this case, there is the uh, lateral synovial fold. This is seen from behind. The synovial fold is here. You can see it. You must see it. And with seeing, you can correct the deformity adequately going up to the plica or maybe over it. And you have to go down to the medial synovial fold. If you don't see it, your correction will not be sufficient. And these are many cases which were shown in the beginning of uh, hip arthroscopy by open surgeons saying hip arthroscopy doesn't allow to treat you adequately the things. So you need to see and then you can correct. And of course, you need to go down the neck to correct sufficiently laterally. Urologic problems do happen. Surgical dislocation, two out of 200 cases, it's not very frequent. 
Most dangerous cases are revision operations where you already have scars, and uh, there you need to be careful. Reverse PAO, no complication has, uh, neurology complication has been described, but of course it's dangerous surgery. The nerves are just around the corner. And in hip arthroscopy, you find between 0 and 12% may be more. The problem is, Many patients don't speak about numbness of the lateral thigh. So do we really know the numbers? If you don't search, you won't find. Treatment, there is no treatment. You can just wait and see. And uh, for this reason, I think prophylaxis is the best treatment. So manipulate your instruments gently manipulate your patient gently, avoid distraction time during hip scope over uh, two hours, avoid pressure points, pad your patients very carefully, and uh, be careful during re-operations where you already have scars. Heterotopic ossifications happen in surgical dislocation. Uh, there were three significant cases described, but Frequently you see such things at the tip of the trochanter which don't disturb the patient, so okay. Um, but in hip scope, I don't know why, uh, these complications were also described and you, have, you see that without prophylaxis, which is logical, it, it's much more frequent uh, than with a prophylaxis. So I always give prophylaxis to, to my patients uh, based on this and contrary to, to, to what Professor Siebenrock said uh, before. Osteoarthritis, I think one point is the indication. Bad indication, bad result. If you see this on your x-ray pictures, you see that there is also a lateral decrease of the joint space. Same patient, false profile, you see that the joint space here is significantly more decreased, and this is the arthro-MRI of the same patient. You see the defect here, and the head migrating into this defect, opening the joint posterior, what I call the, the crescent sign. And this is clearly a no-go for me. The hip is no more congruent. You can do what you want. It will give a bad result. Correction is also critical. You see this patient, 60-year-old lady, had hip pain, went for a hip scope, and after a few months she's not happy because she told her surgeon, well, I have pain, and he says, "Whoa, well, everything is perfect. And if you look actually, I think the anterior rim is overcorrected. And on the false profile view, you see that the head is migrating anteriorly Two months later, it looks like this. The joint space is decreased, and the head migrates all the more. The only thing which you can do in such cases is a total hip. Osteonecrosis, not reported for surgical dislocation of the hip. In a paper about Skiffy, Loinig reported one case, but these are already the more complex cases. And the more complex the corrections are you do, the more risks you take. But if you stick to the, the, the technique, I think you can try and avoid the complications uh, better than if you, if you go saying, yeah, okay, let's do. In arthroscopy, it's rare. We, we have no numbers. But from time to time, you see cases. This was operated by a very skilled surgeon saying, well, this is not difficult surgery. You see the osteotomy is going into the fossa. The head is recontoured there where you surge the, the vessels. <coughs> and this is the end result, 16 year old. Be careful, stick to the technique. <coughs> Sorry. Fracture, I think it's, it's rare. This is a case 40-year-old lady, <coughs> which I operated on for uh, an impingement uh, with hip arthroscopy. She was fine, but two weeks after the operation, she has a very high uh, two-store bed, 
jumped down from her bed and broke her femoral neck. Actually, I think you can't say I overcorrected the neck. Of course, this is one of the points. It has been shown in a study that uh, you can uh, correct down to 30% of the, the uh, thickness of the neck. I think this is anyway much too much. Don't go as far. The less you take off, the less you weaken the, the neck. But you have to take away sufficiently to avoid impingement. I always advise my patients not to do sports for six weeks unless they do cycling, home trainer, or maybe swimming. And uh, the treatment, of course, depends on the type of fracture. If you have a young patient with a non-displaced fracture, you can fix it. If it's displaced in an elderly patient, you are better with a total hip replacement. Specific for surgical dislocation, consolidation problems you've heard about. Uh, it's quite rare. In the first cases, the flat osteotomy was uh, the factor, and uh, this is the reason why the Z-shaped uh, osteotomy was described by Professor Nützli. I think more risk factors are the usual risk factors for consolidation problems, namely smoking, diabetes, and patients not adhering to the, the rehabilitation protocol. You see this case. So was a young patient smoking, despite I told him not to do, and uh, diabetic, and of course it happened what it should happen. In, in those cases, you have to reoperate them. The, the bone was very brittle, so I had to use many screws to, to make it hold, but finally it healed. Trochanter pain, 50% of patients have trochanter pain, probably related to the screws, and if I have a patient complaining about trochanter pain at three months, I remove the screws. If they have no pain, I don't do, because I avoid one more surgery. Uh, you can discuss if it's advisable in young patients to remove the screws to, uh, to avoid problems years later when you need maybe a total hip replacement. The problem is we have patients who have more hardware who have no problem, and patients having just a little hardware and who are painful. In hip arthroscopy, of course, there are traction-related problems, pressure sores, neurologic problems. This is most of the time related either to positioning, be careful, pad your patients, or to traction time. Iatrogenic lesions in the joint are a problem because you have a tiny space where you need to enter to, to do your work. So if you're not used in the beginning, it's difficult. And if you do big movements with your instruments, you will hurt the cartilage. Such scraps are very frequent. Try and avoid such big scars. But it may happen very frequently, as Elisa Lituri showed this uh, two years ago. You can also penetrate the labrum. If it's just like this, it's no problem. If you completely crush the labrum, it's a little more problematic. Fluid extravasation is also a problem with hip arthroscopy. It's quite usual in the thigh. Uh, therefore, try to keep the pressure as low as possible, 50, 60 uh, millimeters of uh, mercury. Uh, avoid large capsular openings and avoid entering the psoas sheath until the end of the, the operation. Be careful with acetabular fractures. If you have just a little bony piece, it's very interesting to go in and remove this. But if you put fluid into a fresh acetabular fracture, you risk an abdominal compartment syndrome. And there was a case of cardiac arrest on the table described in literature. Residual impingement after PAO, you've heard. I won't say more. Uh, other complications are rare. They do happen. The problem there are only few publications and usually by high volume senders or high volume surgeons. And of course, the more experienced you are with this technique, the less problems you have. So I'm sorry, but I have to revise what I said in the beginning. Conclusion, uh, complications do happen. 
but knowing about, carefully planning your surgery, closely sticking to each surgical technique may help decreasing the incidence what is finally what interests us most. Thank you very much. <laughs>